message today is press the oil. Press the oil. Turn with me your Bibles to the book of Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Wasn't that time for some time of worship today? And also thank God for the communion time and the great teaching that came forth. Matthew 26. Now, Matthew 26 is the story of just before Jesus went to the cross and he went to a certain garden called the Garden of Gethsemane. And I will read from verse 36. Matthew 26, 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. What I'm going to do, I'll just be, okay, let, let's read some of the, the passages and then we'll come back. We'll read up to verse 46. And he took with him Peter and the sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. If this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. How many people can relate to that? <laughs> so he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Gethsemane. The garden is called Gethsemane. The simple meaning of the word Gethsemane is oil press. Everybody say oil. oil. Press. Now, Gethsemane is at the foot of the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is very straightforward. It's about olives. And from olives, you get olive oil. But to get olive oil from olives, you have to crush it. You have to press it. So Jesus went through a place of crushing. And it is the crushing that releases the oil. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 that he was bruised for our iniquities. Another translation says, uses that word bruised as crushed. He was crushed for our iniquities. And it is that crushing that releases the fresh oil, the anointing and the grace. Are you going through any crushing point at this point in time? Is God taking you through the meal, the oil meal? trying to squeeze the oil out and your body is screaming out and like Jesus you are saying Lord if it's your will take let this cup pass over me but you see this cup must receive fresh oil this cup must receive fresh oil the crushing is for a purpose the crushing will produce the oil the oil represents the Holy Spirit the oil represents the place of power and anointing. When priests were to be anointed, they pour oil on them. When kings were to be anointed, they pour oil on them. You are a royal priesthood. You are a king and a priest. And the oil anoints you from kingship, rulership, headship. And the oil anoints you for priesthood in worship, 
into the presence of God. But he only must be crushed. Must be crushed. No wonder Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians said, We are crushed but not destroyed. Yes, 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 yes. The crushing will not destroy. Yes. The crushing will produce oil yes. that releases the anointing and power of God. Yes. Is any sick among you? Let them call on the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. And if he's committed any sins, it shall be forgiven him. Yes. Anointing with oil. The oil brings healing and deliverance but the oil comes from the place of crushing get seven the place of crushing there is no oil without the press there is no oil without the pressure pressed on every side the bible says but not destroyed pressed but the pressing that comes that God allows we release the oil. We release the oil. Gethsemane is also a place of the cross. This was just before Jesus went to the cross. But he got to a point. He got to a cross point. He got to a crossroad. He said, There is my will. And there is your will. And he said, Lord, let your will be done. I submit my will to your will. As Christians, on a daily basis, we come to crossroads. Yes. On a daily basis, we have to make decisions. Yes. On a daily basis, we have to make choices. Small choices, big choices. Yes. Our will, his will. We face temptations. Mm. There are things that come our way that wants to make us go one way but yet we have the voice of the Lord and we say like Jesus did let your will be done let your will be done not my will but yours be done Gethsemane is also a place of the cross the, the press involves making the right choice there is pressure, the pressing to make a wrong decision, to go by your will, especially when your will is not in line with the will of God. For example, it is the will of God that husbands love your wives, and it didn't stop them. If he had stopped them, some of us would have been said, that's all right, I can do that. He said, as Jesus loves the church, I raised the bar way up. Yeah. <coughs> way up. Husbands, is that right? Way up! As Jesus loves the church. My will versus your will. He says to the wives, submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Hey! <laughs> I haven't even submitted to myself. <laughs> Let's talk about, about another person. So, which one am I going to do? In fact, in, in, in Genesis, he said to the wife, he said, you shall be the help meet to your husband. Then the Amplified goes further, just to explain it and break it down. He said, adapting yourself to them. Uh -uh. What kind of thing is that? Again, going back to the Ghana story, some of my Ghanaian pastor friends then, when they were in our house, you know, normally, you know, when we get married, they, you know, wife will change their names, and, you know, and take on the surname of the husband, but they will retain their first name. Then some of all, some of them went further. Then when they were referring to my wife, whose name first name is Yemi, they would now say, "See, Star Soji." It's like, oh, oh, hold on, oh, hold on. Can I please hold on to that one? My name is Yemi. I can't lose my surname and then lose my first name <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> but he says, adapting yourselves onto your own husband. And that takes a lot. That takes a lot. It takes the grace of God. But again, that's a Gethsemane place.
place. That's a place where obedience in such areas releases the oil. When Jesus taught us to pray, he said, let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, I like that prayer because when I first started praying it, I didn't personalize it. Here I am, okay? I can do what I like, but let your will be done on earth over there. Yeah. <laughs> but his will cannot, you can't pray for his will to be done on earth unless you first submit for his will to be done in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it takes personal submission to his will for that prayer to become effective out there. So it's not an out there prayer. It's an in and out of me prayer. Yes. Am I speaking to somebody here today? Yes. So Gethsemane is also the place of the cross. In Mark chapter 8 verse 34. Mark 8 34. When he had called the people to himself, that's Jesus of course, with his disciples also, he said to them, Who, whoever desires to come after him. How many people who desire to come after Jesus? Really, all hands should be up here. Okay? It's not a trick question. <laughs> all right. Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself <laughs> and take up his cross. That's what, is, is it in your Bible? As a matter of fact, in my Bible, from who, whoever, it's in red, meaning those are the words of Jesus. Hmm? Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take all his cross. Okay, we understand the cross of Jesus. It is this wooden thing that he was nailed to. But what's my cross? What's your cross? May I submit to you today that your cross is it's not limited to that, but it includes that point when your will crosses his will. When you come to the Gethsemane crossroad and you say, Ah, this is tough. Mm. Ah, Lord Jesus, you're about to be hard thing. Can I go pray about it and say, Yeah, I'm the one you're praying to? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when your will crosses his will and you get to the place of opportunity a place for the oil the fresh oil of God to be released upon your life let me say to you for you to manifest the power and the grace of God and the anointing of God it comes through obedience it comes in the place of obedience disobedient people are not of a great use to God because if he tells them to do something they won't do it but obedient people, even when it's difficult, like in this case, I mean this was difficult. This same account in the book of in the book of Luke, the Bible said that Jesus prayed and his sweat became blood. I understand there's a medical term for that. Is that right? Somebody said. I've heard it mentioned. You know, where is the sweat that came from his body turned into blood? That was this, the, the extent of the agony that he was going through. He said, my body is weak. The spirit is willing, but as for this flesh, ah, doesn't want to go through this cross. And we go through that. We go through that in our daily decisions. We go through that every day. But Jesus said, pick up your cross daily, 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 daily. daily. When he taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer, it's, it's a pattern of prayer and it's a daily thing. In the same way that we say, give us this day our daily bread. Let your will be done today in my life. I submit my will to your will. Let me put it like this. When this is all done, and we reach the age of 120 plus, and then we cross over to the other side. And then we are about to give a cup because I always like to think of the end. Yes. You know, it, it's always good to, to start with the end in mind. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. You start with the end in mind and then you come back to where you are and you say, okay, I have pitched 
my, 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 my flag to that mast. So now how do I get from here to that end? And the end of the Christian race on earth is when we cross over to be with the Lord. At that time, what would matter the most? What would matter the most is that I have done your will. Apostle Paul, when he got to that point and was about to cross over, he looked back, he said, I have finished the race. I have run the cross. There is now a waiting for me, a crown of glory. Jesus himself, when he was on the earth, he said, my food, my meat, is to do the will of God, of my Father. That's his whole purpose, to do his will. So, the Gethsemane point is a place of the cross, is a place of your will versus God's will. So we see here in Matthew 26, and in verse 42, again a second time he went away and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. Some other translations, I think Luke, for example, put it differently. Yeah, I think it was more like, uh, let this cup pass over me, not if. Left to me, I want to dodge this. Yes. But same thing. The flesh is crying out for a particular direction, for a particular choice. But the spirit, the spirit of God on the inside of you would always speak to you concerning what God is saying. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you must learn to listen yes. to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Yes. Yes. The flesh is very loud. Yes. Very loud. Yeah? Very loud. If you are hungry, I mean really hungry, people around will know. <laughs> but when you're hungry for the things of God, you tend not to go crazy about it. That one tends to take a bit of push, some pastor preaching some brimstone and fire message, the worship leader really bringing down the presence of God, and then maybe something will spark. Why is it so? Because the flesh is loud. The flesh is very loud. The appetite of the flesh, the voice of the flesh, very loud. And that's when Elijah was running from Jezebel. It took the still small voice. There was the earthquake. There was the wind and all the noise. But God was not in all of that. That was just flesh. That was just physical stuff. The still small voice. So how do you get to the point where you hear the still small voice? The flesh leads you to temptation. Temptation is not just sin, but it's doing that which is outside of the will of God. Making the wrong decisions, doing the wrong things, saying the wrong things, thinking the wrong thing. But the Holy Spirit will always guide you in the path of righteousness. But Jesus gave us something there. He said, watch and pray, verse 41, lest you enter into temptation. What does that mean? If you don't watch, and pray, you are most likely going to enter into temptation. Watch and pray. Watch your conduct, watch your thoughts, watch the things you, you, you see. You know you can see and not see. <laughs> Does that make sense? You can hear and not hear. You can choose to be selective about the things that you see. You can also choose to be selective about the things that you hear. Yeah? Being selective. In fact, nowadays, let me even put it like this. You need to be selective about the things that you see. <laughs> Men, are you with me? <laughs> you need to be selective about the things that you see. I was thinking during the week. Each time, just get any group of 
people, random people on the beach, you know, just chilling out, and look at their dresses. Usually the men will cover up. And then the women will leave something here, or something there, or something, sorry. But, what, <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this. Men are visual. Come on now, men, don't. I know this is church. But let's be real. Okay? Just don't go holy on me right now. Men are visual. Women know that men are visual. Therefore, they give them visuals. The devil knows that men are visual. And therefore, one of the ways to get them into temptation is to give them visuals. That's why ladies cover up. I know fashion. Gosh, this word fashion. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> you understand? The Bible says that, look, you might say, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, I'm fine with this. Yes, but the Bible says that if eating meat, will cause my brother to sin. Yes. For the sake of my brother, I will not eat meat. Yes. If not covering up, will make my brother to sin. Yes. For the sake of my brother, I will. Let's move on. So, the, the get so many is a place of the oil press where your will comes across the will of God and you have a choice to make. And Jesus himself said so, pick up your cross daily. Deny yourself. It's not all about you. You know, sometimes we just need to get that. It's not all about me. It's not all about me. Let's just say it. Let's just say it to ourselves. Let's see how it feels. It's not all about me. That's the deliverance of some people right there. It's not all about me. It's all about Jesus. So, because when you know that it's not all about you, your choices, you make choice choices. Does that make sense? You make godly choices. You are more willing to listen to the Holy Spirit. You are more capable and empowered to distill the voice of the Spirit from the noise of the flesh all around you. Get seven. The oil press. So Jesus said, the Spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. When he said to the disciples, watch and pray, it sounded like another religious thing. We've been praying with you all this while. Okay. But guess what? He said, if you don't do that, you'll fall into temptation. That same night, they fell asleep. And guess what happened? Peter denied him how many times? Three times, fell into temptation. Same night. This was the same Peter when Jesus knew what was coming, said to him, You will deny me. He said, Ah, ah, me a whole Peter. Or are you talking about John? It's me, Peter. <laughs> I can't deny you, Jesus. You know me now. Abba. But without praying, yes. you are powerless. Yes. In a prayer, in a prayer, in a prayer, in a prayer. Watch and pray, or you fall into temptation. Yeah, yeah. When they call prayer meetings, come. Pray through prayer meetings, Sunday morning, come. Yeah. Night vigil, come. Hello. Hi. Your morning devotion, pray. Don't do the Mickey Mouse one. You know the Mickey Mouse one? Bless me. Amen. See you tomorrow. What's that? Pray! Pray with all of your heart. Put everything into it during that period. Let heaven know that you are praying. Let hell know that you are praying. 
watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. Watch and pray. Talking about prayer, I want to show you two things. You see, there are, there are stages in prayer. There is the corporate prayer that you pray with other people. And then you step outside of that. And then there is the one you pray with closer people. And then you step outside of that. And you get to the point where it is you and God. You and God. None is a... Uh, is, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? None is, a, is an alternative to the other. You need it all. You need a corporate prayer. You need a close circle prayer. But you also need that one-on-one -on -one with God. Let's look at the example of Jesus. Again, talking about getting money, the oil press, how you get into the place where you bring the anointing and the power of God upon your life. In verse 36, then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go over there. So he said that to the disciples. So let's assume it's the 12. Okay, Judas was still one of them at this point. But when you go further, and um, verse 40, then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. So he said, sit here, all right? And then I will go over there and pray. So he went and prayed. And he said to them, you know, they should be watching and praying. But of course, by the time he came back, the guys were in La La Land. So in verse 40, he came to the disciples and found them what? Sleeping. Then this time he said to Peter, James, and John, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. And that's when he said, The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse 43, and he came and found them sleeping, so he left all the twelve, he went again to pray, and then he came back, verse 43, and he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So the third time he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came back, verse 45, and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? I mean, these guys were just sleeping through the whole thing. You will have thought that by the second time, the message would have got through. Still sleeping. And then he said, Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, be going, see my betrayer is at hand. I think by one of the translation here, probably John or Luke, gives us a bit more about that. That the other time he, he, he went and he took Peter, James, and John with him. And he said to them, Stay here. So to the, to, the, to the disciples he said, sit here, but to, the, to, 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 to Peter, John, and, and, and um, James, he, he said to them, he took them with him, and he said, come here and stay here. So he went from sit here to stay here, 12, 3, and then him alone all the way, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed, until his sweat became like God. In your daily life, in your prayer life, there are times you sit with people to pray, there are times you stay with people to pray, but there are times that you go alone to pray. In fact, the Bible tells us that it wasn't the first time that Jesus would go to the garden of Gethsemane to pray. He used to do it overnight. It's just that this time he took the disciples with him. So it was part of his practice to go do this regularly. You need to build a regular, a long time with God. You need to build a regular, a long time with God. Hallelujah. Yeah. To get the oil, to press the oil, Watch and pray. In Romans chapter 7, verses 1 to 6, talking about the, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak, which we see in verse 41 of Matthew 26. Let's look at Romans chapter 7, and uh, I'll show you some things from there. 
This is Apostle Paul speaking now. By the Holy Spirit. Romans 7 verse 1. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives? For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, although she has married another man. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who has raised from the dead, who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. For when we were in the flesh, everyone say flesh, flesh. the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. But now, everyone say now, now. we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. So, Pastor Paul says we were in the flesh, but we have now been delivered and we are now in the spirit. So, the flesh might still be weak, but thank God for the spirit. Thank God for the spirit. Thank God for the spirit of God. So, which means that, yes, we might feel weak in our physical bodies, but we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. I said we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. Which means we have no excuse. We have no excuse. Also verse 14 of Romans 7. Verse 14 of Romans 7 says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal of the flesh, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, again talking about the point of the crossroad, my will, your will, God's will. For what I will to do, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, or how to perform what is good, I do not find. Hold on. He said, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. Now, if nothing good dwells in my flesh, I should not walk according to the flesh. Yeah. Amen. I should not walk according to the flesh, but I should walk according to the spirit. So when the flesh is strong, it doesn't matter because I have the spirit. As long as the spirit is willing, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. As long as the spirit is willing. So because nothing good dwells in the flesh, the flesh is our thoughts that are carnal, our own mind, our own how can I put, ideas, opinions, which are against that of God. Have you heard people say, oh yeah, that's how I feel. Yes. Ah, that feeling can get people to hell. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We are not saved to live by feelings. The feelings are supposed to be subject to our spirit. Do you understand? We need to take our will, align it with the will of God, and from there, conquer the pressures of feelings. We're not to be ruled by feelings. Not to be ruled by feelings. Some people are ruled by anger. And they use anger to control their environment. But the Bible says that 
Because even as a, as, a, as, a, as a youngster, they get their way through anger. If they get angry and they throw a tantrum and kick things around, everybody goes, oh, okay, 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 you can have the toy. And they grow up with that. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that, let me try and get this quite right. The, the wrath of man does not work out the righteousness of God. In English, the fact that you are angry does not make you right with God. The fact that you are angry about the matter does not mean you are right. So, don't use anger to control your environment, nor let other people use their anger to control you. Rather, be led by the Spirit of God. Because nothing good dwells in the flesh. Verse 19. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I will do it but sin that dwells in me. So which means my will is this way, but I find myself doing something else. So what is that thing that is controlling me and going against my will? It's called sin. That's what he's saying. If then, I find there a law, 21, that evil is present with me because sin is evil, the one who wills to do good, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law, but not in my spirit, in my members, in the flesh, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Man, this guy is confused. This is a walking civil war. On the outside, it looks okay. But on the inside, it's like left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. The flesh is saying left, the spirit is saying right. We see that also in Galatians chapter 5. If we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Lust is pressure. Flesh has pressure. It puts pressure on you to go in a certain direction. But you've got to abandon that pressure and go before God. You see, when you take time to go into God's presence, you generate power that enables you to run the race, to align your will with God's will, to give strength on the inside for you to live according to God's word. Without prayer, you can't do that, even though you are born again. That's why many Christians, born again or right, fall into sin repeatedly. Are you with me so far? Because they've abandoned a life of prayer. You see, prayer is more than just saying words to God and say, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That sounds like another song. <laughs> prayer is more than that. Prayer is relationship with God. Do you understand? It's being in His presence and you are communicating, exchanging. For example, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 says that those that wait on God in prayer, shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. The Amplified Bible says, they shall exchange their strength with God's strength. That's what prayer is. So which means in prayer, you stay, you say things, you read the word of God, you meditate on it, you turn it into prayers unto God, you listen to what he has to say to you, through his word, by his spirit, you take hold of it. Amen. Where he says correct that, you correct it. Where he says go right, you go right. That's prayer. Prayer is practical. There is instruction in prayer. There is wisdom in prayer. There is power in prayer. Amen. When you come to your Gethsemane, that's the place of instruction. That's the place of empowerment. 
when Jesus got to that point and his flesh was weak and he says let this cup pass over me do you know what God did? the Bible said that and God sent an angel to strengthen him that's what happens in the place of prayer you receive strength some people when we get to get somebody we run back it's too tough but we should not run back we should stay through let the meal of God continue and finish up the press. Because through that, it's releasing fresh oil, fresh anointing, grace, power for the journey. Am I speaking to somebody here today? Fresh oil. Fresh oil. In closing, when Jesus was going through the on press of Gethsemane. His soul was sorrowful. When Jesus was going through the oil press of Gethsemane, he was betrayed by an inside dog. His name was Judas. When Jesus was going through the oil press of Gethsemane, he was denied by a close one, Peter. When Jesus was going through the oil press of Gethsemane, he became vulnerable. The Bible says that he was spat at, he was beaten, he was struck. They even plucked his bed. When Jesus was going through the oil press of Gethsemane, they accused him falsely. They got, when they couldn't find a, a good accusation against him, they brought up two false witnesses. I mean, these were paid to tell lies against him. And they came and they lied against him. Has anybody borne false witness against you? Have you been denied? Have you been betrayed? Have you been crushed? You are in a good place. I say you are in a good place. For as you turn that over to God, and like Jesus, you say, let your will be done, not my will. Acknowledging that the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. God wants to strengthen you. Stand to your feet right now. I need a choir to please come.